o'clock in order to accommodate the number of folks that are here. We're in the process of setting up the council chamber and the public gallery with screens. If any of you wish to move in order to have seats, you're very welcome to go into the public gallery or the council chamber and view the proceedings on the screens. Yeah, but we won't actually be starting the meeting. Can I move that the, the uh, meeting is adjourned while the oh. officers and the attendants set up the civic hall in order to accommodate all these people who take the time to come down here tonight to ask them to go and sit in the council chamber and watch your webcast. They may, may as well stay at home and watch the webcast. Yeah. They don't yeah. want to watch the webcast. Yeah. In the eye and tell them why this PSPO should not go ahead. That's what they want. And I would move that we move this meeting to the Civic Hall and if that means dispensing with the webcast to accommodate these people who take the time to come here tonight, then so be it. And I'll do that. actually be able to webcast the meeting from the Civic Hall because we don't <laughs>
Can I also say, despite local media coverage, including social media, this meeting is not, and I'll say that again, this meeting is not a decision-making committee, but a scrutiny meeting. It is our brief to make recommendations to the Cabinet member and recommendations only by the appropriate portfolio holder. We have other councillors here this evening in an ex officio capacity who will not vote if a vote is required. So does that, is everyone quite clear with that? Uh, it's particularly important that there seems to have been a reasonable amount of misinformation that this is actually a decision-making committee. It's not. It's our function purely to come up with recommendations. This is pre-decision pre -decision scrutiny. Okay, thanks very much. Can I invite any members to declare any interest or party whipping arrangements? Councillor Musprat. Um, can I declare that I'm a dog owner? Okay, thank you. Councillor Blakely. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm declaring an interest, uh, not about whipping. Uh, I've put me publicly uh, my opposition to this proposal in the press, on social media, and in the council chamber when I spoke in support of the petitioners calling for this to be dropped. However, I come to this meeting tonight with an open mind. I will listen to the evidence put forward by both the uh, people in favour of it and the opposition, and I will make my decision accordingly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Blakely. Chair. At this point, could I raise a point of order? By all means. You, you, you talked about social media before. I've been following this issue on social media. Do you think it's right and proper that council officers who work for parks and gardens should be using social media to promote this PFPO? Because they have. Do you think that's right and proper? That council officers should be promoting the public space prevention order on social media. Okay, I, I personally don't have a view on that, but I'll ask the officer at the appropriate time. Okay, the report summary states, just so that we know what this meeting is about. Proposed dock control measures have been developed in response to extensive resident feedback, expressing concerns at the levels of dog fouling and dog nuisance in Wirral. It is clear that the feedback is related to a small minority of dog owners and is by no means a reflection of the behaviour of many thousands of dog owners in the borough. So I think it's, again, it's equally important that that's stated before the meeting starts proper. Can I now call Mike Coburn to make a presentation, please? Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a presentation. Um, it's probably around um, 13, uh, 14 slides. Um, can we take the lights off the board new chair? That may help you look back to see the backdrop. <coughs> Perhaps the next is well. Yeah. If that helps, we will be able to see the back. Thanks, Chair. So, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, I'm Mike Coburn, and I'm the lead commissioner uh, for the Environment the Council. So, my role is to uh, develop and see through um, the Environment Strategy for the Council. Ahead of the ahead of the uh, committee, um, you received a, uh, a bundle of information uh, for tonight's uh, meeting. There was a covering um, report which set out uh, an overview and directed you to an evidence base. Is the draft public space protection order itself, which is a legal document, it's basically a draft which needs to be worked on, which is the example for you to see. Um, appendix 2 was uh, crucially a set of locations 
where those measures will be applied and that will all reflect that again perhaps we do those meeting. And then a the third uh, appendix was a summary of the consultation exercise that we did uh, in the summer. So, 
Dog farming being the number one priority issue, and the issue about rising dog attacks and dog nuisance. We developed, uh, sort of developed proposals following in the footsteps of those in the Second Council, both introduced public space protection orders and dog control in 2017. Um, that would further protect families and, and, and produce amazing measures. These are the sort of measures that we're used to experiencing when we visit other parts of the country, such as Cornwall, Devon, and, and, and Wales, and particularly North Wales, local to here. And these are the measures that we used to, we used to uh, abide to. We uh, prepared and published an extensive evidence base um, uh, and conducted statutory consultation with a range of bodies, including the police, the Dogs Trust, RSPCA, uh, Kennel Club, etc. We then ex um, um, uh, held an extensive consultation exercise with rural with with residents this summer, and that attracted over 9,000 responses uh, online. 73% of those responding said they were no owners. Now this is the set of proposals that people that were seen previously um, at the time of consultation. So if you like, this is the long list of potential um, uh, measures that would, would, be, would be carried forward. Um, so um, going through them, dog walkers to pick up their dog family forthwith, dog families, dog walkers to carry at the means of disposal on them at all times, to restrict the number of dogs that can be walked by an individual to six on or off a lead, to create a number of dog-free zones in certain locations such as sports fields, playgrounds, at the time I didn't identify bathing beaches, to require dogs to be kept on lead in defined areas, and dogs to be put on lead by uh, instruction or direction, and the trained assistance dogs would be exempt from all or part of the measures. So, as I said, we held the consultation summit uh, with 9,000 responses. Um, some cam campaign groups uh, have become established uh, since, um, and in, in, in response to the proposals. Uh, we want to work with these groups in the future to improve dog owner experience. Uh, issues like illicit provision and location, um, good owner uh, guidance, etc., is something we would like to work on. At the end of the consultation in mid July, the cabinet member, the then cabinet member, stated that because of the uh, response that we received, we wouldn't be continuing with the proposals for the five uh, uh, bathing beaches, and then we would conduct a review of sports pitch locations. We've received fairly strong um, agreements and support uh, following, for the following proposals. This is through the, through the survey. In, in, the, in the report, you actually have the percentages of responses. So people um, were in favour of people being required to carry a supply of bags on them at all times. That, that, that anyone walking um, should have a maximum a number of dogs in their control of six. People were required to keep their dogs on the in certain locations. Increasing the fixed planted notice level to be equivalent to dropping litter, and people being required to put their dog on leave by instruction or direction. There was more mixed, there was more mixed feedback on the dog free zones. However, um, people agreed fundamentally with dog free zones in playgrounds, 80%. Um, similarly, 60% of people responding agreed that dog, there should be dog free zones on Mark's Chris. Marked, not marked sports pitches during the season, tennis courts, bowling greens, and people, uh, however, people generally opposed to um, the dog free zones on beaches. And there was also perhaps a mixed message about the Birkenhead Park Lake. And I think we, we think that people felt that uh, the measures proposed would include the uh, path that surrounds the lake. That wasn't our intention, it was purely the lake and the area within the fence which is designed to protect wildlife. <coughs> so, <coughs> this, these are the final proposals that we want to put to you tonight and to present to the cabinet, depending on your feedback. <coughs> Excuse me. Dog farm enforcement across the border, as it is now, transported into the, into the, into the public space protection order. Dog walkers to carry the bags for the movie and clean them after their dog has fouled. To create a number of dog free locations, such as some park pitches, children's playgrounds, multi use game areas, bowling greens, and tennis courts. 
if you look on the right hand side of the, of the, uh, of the screen there, we've actually set up, so in terms of dog free zones, that's children's playgrounds and loggers all year round. 12 of the 41 mark fixed locations to be in during the season, measures will be carried forward. Tennis courts year round, bowling greens year round, and the fenced area and the somehow in the lake in Birmingham Park to be included. To restrict the number of dogs that can be walked by an individual to six on or off a lead. To require dogs to be kept on a lead in cemeteries and the two bounded picnic areas, not on bounded picnic areas. Dogs to be put on a lead by direction or instruction and trained assistance dogs will be exempt for all or part of the measures. Not to be carried forward, as I mentioned already, at five uh, bathing beaches and the 30 or so marked pitch locations where uh, an evidence threshold has not been met. So if there hasn't been um, four, at least four items, four occasions of dog family, dog family enforcement or dog nuisance, then they weren't carried forward into the measures. So the, of the 12 locations, um, four, <coughs> sorry, eight have got um, alternative location, uh, walking okay, in, in, in the vicinity, and four, uh, we've looked at the nearest available um, alternative dog walking area. Not in the measures are dogs only measures for A and B roads, public car parks, unbounded picnic areas or play equipment, or the public areas of allotment sites. They're not to be carried forward within the measures proposed. So, Chair, some of the position. Um, we've determined the proposals following extensive consultation and review of the evidence. Um, our parks, we're absolutely clear about this, our parks and spaces will be free from dog restrictions apart from the specific facilities I mentioned within them that we maintain are not compatible for dogs. <coughs> Proposals will allow for a cleaner and safer environment for all, dog owners, non-dog owners and their, and their pets across the open spaces of will and parks. Uh, we think as a council we've listened, you've, you've heard tonight uh, that a whole, uh, a whole range of measures have been taken out of these proposals and the proposals that we put to you or put to cabinets are based on what is not compatible for dogs to be in. We can demonstrate as a council we're serious about responding to the residents' needs. The residents set started this off by saying these were priorities that we need to respond to. Now briefly Chair, depending on your, the outcome tonight and your recommendations to the cabinet member, we will present our recommendations to the cabinet next month and depending on their decision, the public space protection order will be implemented in the spring for a period of, of, of three years. In the build-up to that, um, <coughs> the establishment of that, clearly we'll need to do a major uh, promotion campaign and public awareness campaign and work with the campaign groups on establishing uh, the measures um, and, 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 and making absolute clarity for people of what, what, what is expected. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> If you, could, if you could stay where you are, please, while we are our next speaker, just in case there are any technical questions coming from elected members when we have our next speaker. Can I invite Rob Wilkinson? Yeah. Cheers. I think of facts. 
not perspectives. And I've sat in many council meetings, in this room, in other rooms, in other locations, and I've heard a lot of perspectives. Some of them are getting slightly confused. I think the classic one for me was Councillor Phil Davis telling me, all of you, that six children were blinded last year by toxicosis. <laughs> FOI to the NHS were on that. And since FOI records were kept, there has not been a single case of toxicariosis on the whole of the world. Toxicariosis, you're five times more likely because five times more cats carry it than dogs. Foxes carry it. Anything that eats meat carries it. But for some reason, you're trying to suggest it's just dogs that have a problem, even though it's not even a problem. So there's a mixture between facts and reality. So I just thought I'd go through a few of those. The Murray poll, and most of the councillors here, barring a few who live in one area of the world, where dog fouling is not the biggest hot topic. There's a problem with that. It's a perspective. If a dog fouls on the pavement, one dog, it's one foul. If 300 people walk past that, you get an absolute ear bashing because of one dog and one foul. So you're, you're selling this perspective. The reality is, in council chambers, you were presented by Kingdom Security, saying that we are one of the best boroughs in the whole country at picking up after our dogs. There's only 2% of dog owners that are irresponsible. 2% of dog owners equates to 0.5% of the rural population. 99.5% are not in that stat. You are using a big stick for a smaller problem. Are you good? I agree you had a problem, but the previous video was not sorted. You're going about it the wrong way. For lots of reasons which I'll explain. Um, excuse me. Just to give you a statistic, 80,000 dogs in the world, which statistically that would probably be around the white mark. They all go twice a day. That means there are 68.5 million dog fowls on the world each year. We should be swimming in it. 68.5 million. Um, if we go on to say what um, Councillor Phil Davis was alluding to about the, the health and hygiene, and there's been various things in the press about the health and hygiene problems. Everything is based on blaming dogs for fouling on fields. Can't cross the white line. Soil itself contains one, mil bin, one million bacteria per gram of soil. A lot of that, some of that, will be fecal matter from birds, from ducks, from geese, from foxes, from everything, every living animal that crosses our land. Trying to blame, blame dogs for it. Where's the DNA proof? You haven't got any proof. You've got a supposition. You're making it a holy show. So, we don't... Uh, right. Let's just say, I've got, sorry. A few notes, I've got a few written down, I haven't listened to mine. Um, one more look at that one. You're saying you've got to bring the PSPO in because you want to bring the, the instruments dog fouling that down. Uh, so Kingdom are going to, uh, going to uh, step in and issue funds. 
If the whole motivation behind this is to clean the streets. Kingdom handed out in December 2017 558 fines. In December 2018, which is the way I was I look at that, I just have to look at it here before. In 2018, they handed out 600 fines. The number of fines is going up. If it's working, if it was a system that worked to educate the people to, to, to improve the neighbourhoods, the numbers of fines would go down. If you were educated, if you had plastic posters everywhere, people would actually not be doing it. But you say, oh, I put it in the, I put it in the uh, world here, everybody knows about it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it's been found in your documentation and said on many of your meetings that council cannot afford the staffing to manage the dog garden issue. That's your perspective. But you have over £300,000 now in your coffers from Kingdom's Fines. The money that you receive from Kingdom's Fines regarding littering has to be spent on what you are trying to resolve. It has to be spent on cleaning up the neighbourhood. And there's no bins, why don't you spend it on that? You have £300,000 that you could have spent on putting posters everywhere, on putting the, was it 10 boards you've got around the, camp, the borough? You could have, how many of those could you buy? Well, a lot, but you're not doing that. You're saying you're doing one thing, but you're actually doing something else. Truth and reality is, anyway. Um, your list of parks, your list of parks contain three green flag parks. <coughs> if they're green flag, they've passed. Standards far greater than ours. But you're trying to suggest to us that because on 14 pitches in our park you have an average of three fouls reported, it's a huge issue. Green flag says it's not. You can't have it both ways. I'm going to just go to a couple of little notes before I have one point. There's one final point that I can make. Um, and this is just notes that are coming up from uh, Mike Coburn's um, presentation. I noticed recently, I think it was in December stats, that although the PSPO hasn't been brought in, you're already fighting for leads. Your figures. Again, should that be happening? <coughs> should King be doing that? Who's given them the right to do that? Um, you said on the first page, Mike, that um, emphasise that it's a great place for dogs to be. We don't agree. And as I said to you earlier, I don't think we'll agree tonight. You talk about the violence on one of your you talk about the violence perspective on one of your uh, slides. The current PSPA gives Kingdom or will give Kingdom the right to find a person that has a dangerous dog. And yeah, they deserve so fun. Yeah. But it doesn't resolve the issue. That person will still have the dangerous dog, they will still visit the park every day, it will still cause a nuisance. Kingdom might go there and go, I'll find you a pound every day. They will tell the porkies over what their name is, what their address is. That, kid, that dog will still be in the park every day. But the PSPO does not, in any way, shape or form, address the issues that need addressing. Dog fouling happens. I was being interviewed by Dave Guest for the BBC last week. I stood at Park Drive West and I watched a dog foul. I watched a guy walk away, walk in the park, didn't give two minutes. He needs phoning, he needs sorting. But with a car license, we will get a fine for the speeding. We'll get another fine, it's bigger. We'll get another fine, it's bigger. 
Then they take our license away. Then it impacts our lifestyle. If you were just going to give out fines without it being able to impact lifestyles enough that it will get those irresponsible 0.5% to behave, you are, excuse the pun, barking up the wrong tree. spoken to Dogs Trust, RSPCA, various other bodies. If he has, he will know that they point blank disagree with PSBOs. They are opposed to PSBOs. So by Mr. Coburn presenting to you that they have discussed things with them, I hope they gave him the flea of the ear that they suggest is what they always do. They don't agree with PSBOs. So using them as a tool to back up what you're doing, we've spoken to them in person, they disagree. Assistance dogs, excluded. In some places, we have a very concerned rural resident who has an assistance dog, and her concern is when she's exercising her dog off lead, as per the Animal Welfare Act, off lead, in an open space, if her assistance dog crosses a line, she'll still get a hundred pound fine. The lady is disabled, and she'll get a hundred pound fine. It isn't helping anyone. Kingdom will be the one that we call The bunch of bullies. The bunch of bullies. That's um, all they are, bullies. Kingdom are going to enforce it. They will suggest to you, they will present to you, or they will say that they have trained staff. I will suggest to you they do not have any animal behaviour staff that can recognise the difference between a dog protecting an old lady and standing up for it and an aggressive dog and to attack them. And the fact is, to the like facts, the lady on the world received a fine because she, her bitch squatted and peed. The kingdom officer ran over shouting and screaming at her, waving her arms, saying, your dog's just a... She was so traumatized, dog was barking, which most ladies, if they've got dogs, part of the reason having a dog is a sense of protection when you're out. So the dog is doing what it's, it's there for. Didn't bite anybody, didn't get aggressive, didn't go for. But because the dog barked, he insisted she was on the lead. The lead she got was an extendable lead. She received three hundred pounds in fines for a dog oh, on the grass. Amazing scheme. Yes. That's what yes. it is. That's what it's down to. Talk about you, mate. No, 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 I'm talking to you. It's about time you got rid of the kingdoms and yes, more the proper yeah. people that are trained with dogs. Yeah. What they're doing. Yeah. Out of the door. You need kicking out the way up. Can I just remind folks, please? We have to have someone who's trying to speak at the moment. Just give us a bit of. Yeah, I've got two more points. Please, John, if you can wrap it up now, please. I've got two more points. Sorry, that's alright. So, first one is um, my suggestion that he's going to work with groups. I spoke to Matthew Patrick on Whitfield Common and said, I've got loads of suggestions for you. How uh, Woodall could raise revenue, manage the dog issue, employ people. At no, and we're always, council would see money coming in. I quoted a figure to city, radio city today. Off the top of my head, eight million pounds. Instead of which, you're going to find a people for a hundred pounds. Please get creative, not punitive, with the people of the world. And I have a last point. I sat in a meeting. I have a feeling it was Adam. I have a feeling it's definitely from that side of the room. Adam. I know Adam. And he asked a question. It might not be the other, but I, I, I think it was. You asked the question in the chair, and you said, is it right that a person stopped with a PSPO 
is required by law to give their name and address. So the chair at the time deferred to the solicitor, bit of a conflict, and the solicitor said, yes, they have to give their name and address. <coughs> Under British law at the moment, the laws that are being worked on with King at the moment, yes, that may be true. But there is a loophole yeah. with the PSPO. We are not, not required to give our name and address under British law. If everybody on the world knows that, they're not going to get many fines. Thank you. Trying to get dog bins put in. Because 